From the land down under, with the rock at its centre, comes the little Aussie watchman. The purpose of this video is to see if Dr. Douglas Franks' data is correct. So we start with his graph of the Richland County. We'll see if we can replicate this. Okay, so we go to the data site, which is the official Ohio government site, download the data from uh, Richland, which is down here somewhere. Let's have a look. There it goes. So we're going to download that. Um, and it's going to come up as uh, a text file, which we're then going to open up in Excel. So there's a text file there. Double click it. You see we've got to separate the tabs uh, with the commas. I like how it's given in the text file there. So we'll download that. And our next step is to get rid of the junk. So we want the date of birth. Uh, of the of each individual uh, voter and we also want whether they voted or not um, in the you know uh, 2020 election so which one that one CY uh, and I'll show you that in a second we're just deleting all the rubbish that we don't need so we've got date of birth um, who voted in the 2020 election uh, which is signified by an X there as you can see so we'll just make that obvious okay so our next step is to um, work out the ages of these patients um, and this is done by comparing their date of birth uh, to the date of the election so we want the date on the 2020 election obviously uh, the first thing I'm going to do is sort this data so there we go we'll sort that uh, based on age oldest to newest um, and then we'll put in the date of the election with our sorted data um, and we'll do that with every single uh, row. Um, I'll just skip that because it's a bit tedious. Um, and then we'll go to working out the age difference between those two dates and that's done in Excel with a date diff function which is pretty handy. Um, so you just put the date of birth date of the election and work out how many years and that's the y value there and look at go excel is fantastic i love excel and here we go so um, it works out all the dates the ages of the registered voters now we want to go and work out how many say 90 year olds are, reg are registered voters so we do that by first we put in all the age groups, so 16, and I'm gonna go 16 to, I don't know, 114 or something like that. Um, and then number of registered voters at that age group. So that uses a function in Excel called count if. So it counts the number of uh, same numbers. If, I'm not sure if explaining that right, but anyway, I think you know what I mean. So we get uh, data from the D column, uh, from that we need to go right to the bottom of D column. So if we go to the bottom of the D column, what's that the number down there? That's 81543, so eight, 81,543. So we put that in there um, and then we correlate that with the column E. So work out how many 16 year olds uh, in registered voters, 17, 18, all the way to 100 and something. Okay, here we go. We'll just put that in and and voila. We've got all the registered voters at each single age group. Now, now we've got to work out who actually voted. So I'm going to do, do that on a different tab um, and make that, let's call it Richland Ballots Cast. Um, and we'll copy the data from Richland. So date of birth, whether they voted or not. Uh, and, the, and the election date, uh, we'll copy all that and then paste it into this new tab. And we've got to go through the same process again. Um, oh, first, before we do that, we've got to delete all the blanks and just have the X, uh, the rows with X's in it, like who actually voted. And there you go, it sort of it can select all the blanks and then we can delete that. Here we go, delete all the rows which people who haven't actually voted. Uh, can take a while so we'll, we'll just magic of Final Cut Pro uh, go forward we'll do the same thing again work out the H using the date um, difference function between the date of birth and date of the election so it's pretty straightforward stuff um, and 
I mean, the whole idea of this exercise is to try and work out if Dr. Douglas Frank's numbers are correct. Um, because, hey, he might be lying, I guess. Um, and then, so we'll do the same thing. We'll get our ages, so 16 to 100 and something. So put that down there. And then we're going to work out how many registered voters in each age group voted, actually voted. So, you know, so which ballots were cast at that age group. How many of those 16-year-olds, which should be zero, obviously, because they shouldn't be voting at that age in the election. But you never know, weirder things have happened. So we'll get the, we'll get the data from the D column. So D2 till D, I wonder where it is. Um, probably 400 and something, I'm guessing. Oh, no. Uh, 59442. So put that into our date range, D59442. And then we'll uh, correlate that with the E column. So our ages. Done. And we'll put all that. And next step after we've done all this is to graph the data. So I'm going to paste that. I'm going to work out what they are. And then I'm planning to copy that. So we'll copy it all. Uh, highlight it. Copy it. Go to the original tab. The Richland tab. Um, oh, there we go. Copy. Uh, go to the Richland tab, which we'll do now and then paste it next to the uh, actual number of registered voters. So of those registered voters, these are the voters that um, that actually voted, and we need to paste in the values there. Beautiful. Now let's going to graph those data and just see if it correlates with Dr. Frank's graph. Okay, here we go. So we'll, we'll highlight all this uh, 0 to 100 and something uh, age groups, and we'll make it to 98. Um, and then we'll graph that. So that's by inserting a chart. So we'll go insert uh, chart, wherever it is. There it goes. Uh, and align it. Align is easiest. So where's that? Yep, there we go. Uh, put that in. So that seems like a pretty standard Dr. Frank kind of graph um, with the two peaks at the high age groups, which is related to 2010 census data. But anyway, here we go. Let's go see if. Things are correct, looks okay at the upper ranges. We've got the same bumps and lumps around, and they correlate frequently similar, which is the key that something weird is going on. So there's a correlation between those two lines, uh, registered voters and ballots cast. Um, and then we'll go on to the next step, which is to see if we can, if his key works, i.e. The, uh, the key is, basically working out how mathematically they worked out ballots cast from registered voters. And it used a mathematical formula, which we're not going to work out, but we're going to get the curve for you. Um, so let's go, let's do the percentage difference. So that's just uh, ballots cast over registered voters times 100. Um, so column G, column F times 100, here we go. Um, and there's all the percentages. Uh, and we just need to graph that, and we'll get a. We should get a curve if Dr. Frank was correct. Let's see if there's a curve chart. Do the same thing. Line. Ooh, there's a nice little curve for us. Uh, it's got. Looks like it's got has a mathematical function, and apparently it's a six degree mathematical formula. If you compare, um, especially the big counties with lots and lots of numbers, that that curve gets smoother and smoother and smoother. Um, let's see if it correlates with his key. Where is it? Oh, here we go. Ohio registration key looks pretty similar. I think Douglas Frank might be onto something. There's a mathematical link between registered voters and ballots cast.